to try and at first get the rope from the middle and then get on the different platforms. And then we had to be creative in the way we got the rope. We ended up using Alyssa's purse to move around and pull it. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember that. I was a part of that. What else did you guys do? There were some really funny stories. What were some of the obstacles you guys had to do? Alyssa? Um, She's laughing. <laughs> we had to get inside something that I described as like Spider-Man's lair. I agree. <laughs> which was this triangle of trees and there were a bunch of wires stretched between them. And the goal was to get inside without touching any of the ropes. But you had to get into the second layer, so we ended up like flinging people into places where they should not be long. I was one of them too. I, I participated with their group last week. What else? What other fun stuff did you guys do? What did we make you do? Hold hands with Nikki. Okay. So why did we make you guys wander around in the woods on a Thursday night? What does that have to do with the business plan? How do you know where you're going? Good try, Matt. What? Yeah, about working as a team, exactly, and overcoming obstacles. And when you guys are writing a business plan, you guys are going to overcome a lot of different obstacles. And one of those is going to be organizing your finances why we have our speakers here today. Can you guys give a round of applause quick for Brett and Josh for joining us. And before we do that, I'm going to ask, um, go over a couple housekeeping rules and also ask for your guys' business concept. Now, do raise your hand if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Awesome. So, that is pretty encouraging. Yeah, that's great. So, Courtney, would you like to introduce our progress for success? All right, so basically, you know how we gave you guys all those due dates? This is going to be basically your public accountability system. So every week, you're going to bring in the section that was due and assigned to you from the week before. And if you bring it in, you're going to get a check mark. So these are each of the sections, the business description, which is what you're turning in today, financial plan, and then um, real quick, we're going to have a second due date for the financial plan. So after you guys turn in, financial plan we'll have another one so you can fix it and come back because that that section is actually really tough so pay attention today uh, but yeah the rest of the sections are up here so we're going to bring this back every week and if your team brings in your your portion that was due you'll get a big check mark in the box and then we will give you the option to have it reviewed and give it back to you so that's really helpful for you guys as you're going compiling your stuff to get some input it's really valuable so yeah. I'm not going to say it's a competition, but it kind of is, because you want your team to be awesome. And it's business. It's competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this week, we're turning a hard copy, but for the most part from now on, you guys will be working online to turn in your information, and you'll be working with your mentors who you guys will be able to meet next week. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll go on Dropbox, and you'll be able to submit your different files as we go along. So for example, this week, you guys are going to have a financial plan to work on, which our speakers will discuss with you today. But you'll have to access Dropbox first. So I'm going to give you guys all your team Dropbox accounts. Each team has their own Gmail account and a password to access Dropbox. And from there, you guys will be able to communicate with Courtney, myself, your respective teachers, so Mr. Arms or Mr. Robertson, depending on what school you're from. Um, and that'll help keep, keep you accountable and you'll also be able to share with your mentors that way, okay? So as I call your guys' team up, one person, if you could bring up your business concept, and then I'll give one person your password and username, okay? Thumbs up? Yes, makes sense. Awesome. Yep. We're gonna call up team nine. That's Jonah, Noah, and Mila. Now I know Mila's not here, but. Jonah's has a plan? Alright, no problem. Try and bring it next week so we can check it off, alright? Yeah. Team 1. Blake, Nicole, Alex, John McKenzie. Any of the above? Yeah. Awesome. Alex? I see your rest of your team isn't here. Yeah, It's okay. So we'll see the business comes next week. Yeah. So you can get a big X. Good job. Team 8. <laughs> Brianna, Noah, Sarah. Big check mark. 
what you're going to reinvest in your company, what you're going to need up front. And then, uh, but the most important part behind it is it isn't realistic. And then behind, what the data behind your numbers, how realistic is it? Where did you get it from? And then what, what are you going to do with that data and how does that shape, you know, what you're going to sell, whatever you're making for, how much does it cost to make that? that that's going to be the, that's kind of going to be the nuts and bolts of it. And then down there it is going to be the first two years is what you're going to have to think about. And a lot of things that people don't think about is your first three months of business, it, it, it sure would be nice to start off with a lot of sales. It's probably not reality because you've got, and you're going to have startup costs before those three months. And then even in the first three months, your costs are probably going to be a little bit higher uh, than you expect. And then what it's going to be the part of your financial plan that's going to be required for you guys is your cash requirements. So that's what kind of cash you're going to need to start it and to carry uh, forward your, uh, or I guess, I'm sorry, cash sources and requirements. Your sources are what you're going to need uh, to, to start to do it. And your requirements are what are you going to spend the cash on? Is it equipment? Uh, what is going to be your payroll before you have any, uh, any sales? And then uh, if you're going to borrow money, how are you going to pay it back? And then you build that in. Then you got an income statement and a balance sheet. This is really, uh, this tells the, I guess it paints the picture of the financial health of your um, financial plan. And we'll, we'll get into more details on all four of those. Uh, go back just a second, uh, before we uh, get done, because that's where you guys are really going to need to see uh, some details, kind of understand that, and kind of what goes into each one of those sections. Uh, we talked about research, uh, and then you're just going to kind of summarize all of that and put it in a, uh, just a summary form uh, at the end of your plan that, that you can take to an investor, to, to a friend, to a parent, to a bank, and say, here's what we do, here's how we do it, here's how we're going to make money, here's how much money we can make. Because it's, it's very tough to, to borrow money as a startup business if the research is behind it and if the, if the data is not accurate. And then, you want to cover some of this. We'll get, I don't, do they have the handouts? Yeah. Oh. We do. We got a big advantage of you guys right now. You would cover the cash requirements. Yeah. The, the cash requirements when you're looking at, at a startup, yes. you know, there, there's going to be a lag time between when you actually launch your business and when you actually start generating revenue. So, so when you're looking at your startup expenses, you need to not only look at you know, what's it going to cost you for, if, if you're a manufacturing facility, what's it going to cost you for your building, what's it going to cost you for the equipment, but you also need to look at what is it going to cost me to initially run this equipment, to pay our labor, pay our people, uh, and before we can actually generate revenue. Um, so you know, that, that's one thing that we see a lot of that gets over the initial cost, um, the initial, I guess, human capital, people, people cost. Um, you know, and, and I guess that moves right into your monthly expenses with payroll, rent, um, things like that, your, your overall overhead. This is the sheet. It's in, it's in, it's in, the, it's in the Facebook group. It's, a, it's an Excel spreadsheet. This is, this is kind of what's good. That's the actual document. That this is going to be the actual document that goes into your plan. Uh, some of the things you got to think about uh, from a building standpoint: Are you going to own a building? Are you going to rent? How much space? Uh, what what is what's going rent for that space? You, you can all that's available uh, online to kind of get an idea uh, of what you're going to need to, to get a accurate picture of. Do you need warehouse space? Is it office space? Is it is it just a, a one office and you're doing computer stuff? Up here? But there's a lot of information available on what costs of buildings are, things like that. Uh, and from for your perspective, from a bank's perspective, if you're going to buy a building, a bank's going to expect, expect anywhere from 25 to 35 percent down payment in cash. So if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar building, you're going to need to have probably 25 to 35 thousand dollars to put down to borrow 75 to 65 thousand. So think think about those things. That's the and then the payback on something like that is typically. 15 years, 15 to 20 years. 
And so that will kind of give you an idea of what's going to come out each month. And does it make more sense to buy versus rent if you can find a building? So uh, a lot of things to think about. Um, it, it, I guess we didn't say this at the beginning, but you guys have questions. Ask them now. No, we don't need to wait till the end. We need to make this interactive so you guys get something out of it and stay awake at the same time because the lights are off. So uh, without us knowing what business you guys have, it's, it's tough for us to specifically speak. So if you've got questions, though, feel free to ask at any time. Does anybody want to share what their initial concept is?
motivation to start your business uh, and get yourself to the point where you're generating revenue. Right? And you know that's that's the thing. You know, you got to be very cognizant of if, if you think it's going to take fifty thousand dollars to buy all the equipment that you need to start your business. You're probably going to need
really nice if we could just say, we're just going to take out this huge loan just for my family. That's how we're going to come to business. You got to pull from a, a lot of different places. And that goes back to being realistic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, when, we, when we move out of the sources and uses of funds for, for starting a business, then we actually get into generating sales, right? And, and what it actually Of your income statement. Uh, so you know you, you have sales, you have your expenses, and then you have your net income. So what kind of money are you actually making? How much money are you actually making off of a dollar of sales? Okay. What's R and D? Research and development. Yeah, I mean the, your your expenses differ from business to business types of expenses. So, so 
that's what, that will all factor into your income statement. And if, you know, it's all derived from the sale of your product or the sale of your service. And this is the, this is the format uh, that's on the Facebook page that we provided to you uh, as, as an income statement template. There's two years there. So it, it may be standpoint to do it in months at first and then to combine them into a year just so you can kind of see that at least from my perspective and you can kind of break that down into the first 12 months and then your second 12 months but I, I would say do monthly for the first year and maybe quarterly for the second year but then combine them into, into that form you know I think you'll have an easier time uh, building that instead of trying to say it's this times 12 it's probably not going to be times 12 uh, at first maybe the second year it is but I don't I don't See how you're going to start off day one and do the same thing you're going to do in month 12. The balance sheet is, is basically just a listing of what you own as a company and what you owe to other people, banks, investors, things of that sort. Um, their assets are broken. Some of your, your debt, and I don't know if it's talked about. I, mean, I think 
over it, cover it a little bit. If it's paid back in less than a year, it's a current liability. If it's paid back in more than a year, it's a long-term liability. So as Brett mentioned, a, a line of credit, you guys probably have no idea what that is. Um, it would be it would be considered short-term. It's if you were making something and you're, and you're selling something and you're going to sell it on uh, like a term where you can have it today but you don't have to pay me for 30 days. A lot of the times uh, companies will have what we call a line of credit to where they'll borrow their costs of what they sold and then when they're paid they'll pay back their line of credit and the rest of them they'll put it in uh, their cash. So uh, it's something you may want to research. Uh, it's kind of in a simple form, it's a big credit card that just revolves back and forth uh, for businesses, but it's done through a bank and not a credit card. It's the, I guess, the simplest way uh, to explain. To explain, as your questions on the balance sheet. Right. I mean, there, no one has a perfect business. It's impossible. 
and so I think to to address some of the negative things with how the way we do it, if we've got a loan, we have to take the loan committee for a business. What we do is we've got strengths and weaknesses right of every business, and, and what we do is we'll take our weaknesses and we'll address. Hey, here's how they're addressing this. Here's how we'll address this. And so take the things that, that you've got to work on, but you know your strengths are your strengths, and that and that's good. But your weaknesses are where you got to improve. And if you can improve those weaknesses and say, hey, look, here's where we're going to struggle, but here's the three things that we're going to do to help this weakness become a positive in year two or year three or whatever it is, that investors will, will look to that um, favorably. That you're not that you're not hiding anything from. The worst thing that can ever happen is if they catch you hiding something. Then they don't trust anything you said to them. And so make sure that they understand um, your weaknesses and make sure they know exactly what you're doing to turn those weaknesses into strengths. Any other thoughts on how you would approach someone? Because it's, it's tough. And how do you call them? I mean, what do you say? Do you, do you dress up? Do you not dress up? Do you, I mean, it's, it's how you present yourself, too, right? It's what you believe in your business. So,
that help in any way we can. So is there any other questions though, that you guys have? It doesn't have to be about financial, it can be about banking, it can be about loans, it can be about uh, life, we'll try to answer it.
or is this crazy, or like, can I actually afford this, right? No question is a dumb question, especially in business, because you don't want to get caught hiding something, and you don't want to get, you don't want to get asked a question that you don't know how to answer, especially when you're trying to ask someone for money. I mean, like, put yourself in their shoes. Like, if someone wanted to borrow your $50,000, like, what criteria would you want them to fulfill? You know, try to put yourselves in these guys' shoes, and that'll help you guys a lot through this process. So, um, the SBA, so Small Business Administration and email addresses are two awesome resources that, again, I'll post on Facebook. So be sure to find it. And then do you guys have any of your last announcements or questions? If you want us to come in for your team time to talk to you through some of this stuff, yeah. please email us. We would be more than happy to come in um, during your team time to work with you. Anything else? I don't think so. Fill out the speaker evaluation form and sign the attendance sheet have not. One more big round of applause. Our guest speaker. Our guest speakers are dismissed. Next week we'll be at Mississippi. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. Oh, that's what you want. Yeah. Oh,